So from the last video, quite a good number of you guys were asking me, hey Walter, can you explain what copywriting is? Someone also asked me if I could list out the sub niches of copywriting. And basically, you guys just wanted to know more about copywriting, right? So this is mainly a reply for the person who asked me to list out the sub niches of copywriting. I'm not just going to do that. I'm going to do you one way even better. I'm going to explain the types of copywriting. I'm also going to list out the pros and cons so that when you're coming in, whether you're as a newbie or anyone who's watching this right now, you know exactly what it is you want to do that will fit the time you have free, your personality, and basically the rest of that, okay? So with that being said, come along, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about right here is what is copywriting? Let's say, hypothetically, you're watching this video and you have no freaking idea what copywriting is, right? So copywriting is simply you writing persuasive words for businesses in order to get people to take action. Now, it might not be for businesses. You can use copywriting in your everyday the everyday to day life where it's basically you using persuasive words written words in the case of copywriting you can use it when spoken but mainly as a deliverable it's always written right you are writing persuasive words to get people to take action now what could that action be the action could be to buy a product could be to buy a service it could be to follow a social media page it could be to subscribe on youtube it could be to share a content or any of those type of things right that's the action so with that being said, let's get down into the types of copywriting. So the first one we have right here is direct response copywriting. Walter, what is direct response copywriting? It's quite simple actually. And just like the name states, direct response, it simply means the type of copywriting that aims to get immediate response from the audience or the person within it, right? So have you ever come across, let's say, a Facebook ad or an email that tells you a lot of stuff and then bam, they tell you to buy something at the end of it and if it's a fit for you you are hungry to get that immediately right whether it's a health product for hypertension or any of those type of things that's basically an example of direct response listening because you're aiming to get an immediate response out of your audience out of the people who are reading that copy now direct response can be a sales letter basically a long letter that you read and people will make purchases for right it could be in emails and the rest of that we're going to get into that on this other aspect here on my left right so the good thing about direct response is that it's easy for people to track and personally as a copywriter that's what i focus on and that's what my mentor advised us to focus on and that's it's like the best way of because any other form of copywriting you're yeah, really trashing into the content writing zone and you know content writers don't get paid half as well as copywriters if you know what they're doing. Okay, so by the end of this video, you definitely know what they're doing. So that's basically, it is easily, uh, easy to measure, easy to see the results, so it's like the best form of copywriting. The next one we have here is the conventional copywriter. Me, I came up with this one because it's simply like the conventional copywriter that does everything. Person says he's direct response. Person says he's into B2B, he's into B2C, he's doing every type of copywriter. Those are the conventional copywriters, right? Those ones do everything when it comes to copywriting. Now, the next type of copywriting we have here is B2B. What does B2B stand for? Business to business, right? So we're going to be writing copy, that's what you call it, right? Or writing deliverables to help business to other businesses acquire more customers right now this is a little bit more formal sounding sometimes not every time but it gets other businesses to patronize other businesses because that's exactly what they need right and i would say in my own opinion b2b is basically the same thing as b2c because when it comes to selling the next person you're talking to trying to get to buy from you is simply a consumer so what's the, really the difference even in b2b so when i'm writing com, um, copy for a b2b letter i'm writing for a, uh, a digital marketing agency that is looking to close more clients or i'm writing for a company that supplies nose marks i did that during the covid era i wrote for a um, company that was selling that was selling nose marks and all these office equipment to reach out a, a broker for them to reach out to other companies I get them to write. I wrote it like I was writing to a consumer because that's the best way you can actually get fast and effective results if you're a copywriter, right? Now, the next one we have here is B2C, simply um, business to consumer. So it's from a business standpoint to directly to the consumer. That's basically what you're doing. Uh, that's basically B2B or B2C or D2C, right? You're basically talking to the consumer and getting them to make a purchase. So it's a business 
writing out to you to get um to get you to make a purchase, get it through your social media channel and the rest of that. And simply just that, right? I don't want to go too deep before it confuses you. There's nothing even deep for me to actually be really going into because these are like simply the definitions. You are writing persuasive words to get people to take action. That's copywriting. If you are doing direct response, you're writing persuasive words for people to take action immediately. You want an immediate response, yes or no, give it to me now. Obviously, you're aiming for the known, but that's what you're looking for. Conventional, you're writing is just basically the same definition as copywriting, persuasive words in all formats to different types of people to get them to that. B2B, you're writing persuasive words as a business to another business, to get the other business to do business with you. B2C, you're writing persuasive words as a business to get consumers to buy from you or deal with you, basically, right? So these are like the types of copywriting. And now that we've gone through this, now that we've gone through this, let's get into deliverables for copywriting. And this is a very important aspect if you've been thinking of getting into copywriting because I'm going to be explaining everything here and it's going to help you see and help you choose which aspects you want to focus on. Because when I got into copywriting, I was doing the conventional stuff. I was writing sales letters. I was writing emails. I was writing videos. I was writing everything, social media and the rest of that. And it's good to learn the surface level of everything. But let's say you want verifiable fast results in the next 30 days, 40 days, 50 days, 60 days. And you want to really go long term. I want to be highly sought after. Then you want to niche down. But Niche down, I'm going to be talking about here, it's not just, it's not going to be about industries. If we still have time after this, I'll talk about industries. But it's mainly going to be about deliverables that you can offer as a copywriter. So the first one you can talk about right here is email copywriting. My bread and butter, it's the best. Because in the next two weeks to 30 days, you can actually get started with email copywriting. It's like super sweet. Because number one, you're writing like 500 words to 1,000 words. It's not really that much. It's easy for you to assimilate and get started. And it's a recurring form of deliverable. So you can't just write five email sequences for a company and you do well and they don't come back to come and work with you again. Because they have an email list and they need to send emails to that email list consistently. They need to do that. So they are going to put you on the retainer and pay you monthly for you to write that email, right? So that's basically email copywriting. You receive emails from companies that are like, come and attend this and the rest of that. So that's basically it, right? But remember, you're going to be a copywriter, so you're using persuasive words to get people, again, to take action. Just simply put that in your mind. The next one we have right here is VSL copywriting. Not a bad one at all. The first VSL I wrote, I charged $1,000. I was writing for a school. It was a B2B, basically. I was writing for a marketing agency that helps schools abroad get other students to come. I know their sign up fee or their registration fee will be around $250. So, like, that's why it's better you're working with foreign clients because they can pay you. So, they paid me $1,000. And I'm very honest with you. I hope the clients never see this. But the first time I wrote this, I had never written a VSL before. And that's why it's super sweet because VSL and sales letters are very closely related. And I'm going to be showing you right now. So, VSL simply stands for Video Sales Letter. Then sales letter is normal sales letter. So it's basically like a sales letter where you write on a landing page, you write on the page, and it's a long list of, hey, this is for you if you are XYZ, this is not for you. Here's why you can do this. You imagine the benefits. Imagine you get your life in order and you get fit right now. How much more girls could you attract? How much more money would you make? All those type of things, right? You put them all and jump back into a sales letter. So a VSL is simply the video form of it. So you're writing like a video script in like a sales letter, but just know that you're writing it for someone else to write the video script and you're going to talk about you're also going to put the places where the person would be like pause right and the person will continue again or the person will have to raise their voice or stuff like that basically you're going to like insert that but still it's basically the same thing as sales letters because you're writing a sales letter and just know that the person is actually going to make mention of it and the person is actually going to read it out loud right so it's different from webinars because webinars is more about slide to slide, but VSLs could be just like me standing here and presenting, presenting to you. Imagine if I was presenting to you a business I wanted you to invest in right now. That would be a VSL, basically. Maybe I have it at the back of my head. Simple as that, right? So VSL is really good, but like I said, is the type why I don't focus on strictly being a VSL copywriter and why my other colleagues I've seen who try to focus on being a VSL copywriter. They don't last that long in the market. Is simply because once you've written it and it's good, the client does not really have much need for another VSL again. 
especially if they are selling only one product or one business, right? They don't have much need for that. Same thing with sales letters too. Sales letters, as you write, it's written mostly best in the listen. If you try to buy a course, if you try to buy um, a health supplement advertised to you on Facebook and the rest of that, you must have come across a sales letter where the person talks about the product, how the product helps this XYZ, help that person, blah, 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 and why they believe it can work for you and help you too, right? So that's basically sales letter and the same thing basically as VLSO where you talk about it, right? So sales letters are written and they are basically the same thing as VLSO in my opinion. And the good thing about sales letters is that you can charge royalties for it. I mean, you can charge royalties for VLSO, but it's very hard to charge for that. But with sales letters, you can actually charge royalties for it and get paid for it too, right? So sales letter again, why I don't recommend it, especially if you're a newbie easing into the copywriting world, is that sales letters are long. Like I'm writing a sales letter right now, a month is basically, and I'm, it's for a crypto company. And for the past one week, I've been doing research. Don't mind me, it doesn't take that long normally, I'm just being lazy, but basically it takes about three days or two days to gather as much information as possible and think of the angles you're going to start the sales letter from and the rest of that. Whereas when it comes to email copywriting, it's pretty much simple, you're not writing words. Sales letters can be up to 15,000, 20,000, 25,000 words and even more than that. Like their sales letters are up to 30 pages. Come on, think about it. But those ones are for like advanced, super advanced people who charge something about $10,000 for that, right? But for the average sales letter, we're charging $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 then it's not going to be super long like that. It's probably going to be like max six, seven, eight pages. But sales letters are just super long and it's not easy for a newbie to grasp all aspects of it. So these are like deliverables you can do and focus on delivering as a copywriter, right? The next one we have is press release, right? So you are writing for politicians, you are writing for companies. It's mostly for B2B basically to release out a press release that would be, again, persuasive words that get people to take action or get people to feel some type of way and maybe share your content and the rest of that. Now, why this is not really in high demand and it's not even that popular, probably the first time I heard about it, it's simply because there's no much demand for it, right? And mostly journalists are the ones that overtake these as copywriters. That's why you see journalists on freelance platforms where people are like trying to like get people to hire them. You see journalists coming out there to scoop jobs on Monday of Fritz because they are mostly the ones that have experience with this, right? So the next thing we have is social media copywriter. This is under insanely good one if you want to get into copywriting. So what you're going to be doing in the, on this is simply you're going to be writing content on social media that will get people to actually take action. Now for LinkedIn, it could be writing it and designing the slides for your clients. It could be writing the normal words in form of written words. Same thing for Instagram, but you can't write normal words on Instagram, right? So you write it and put them in slides or you give their graphics, the company's graphics, and I put them in slides. They slide and they read all they want to read through. Right? Twitter, bread and butter. Now, I gave this idea to my students. I'm giving it to you right now for free. You can go on LinkedIn, search for CEOs who are active but kind of inactive. And they're not posting, they're not creators, right? And you tell them, hey, I can see your page is dormant. In this modern day, if you want more lights to be shared on your business, you need to actually be an active CEO. So I know probably you don't have a lot of time for what it is you're doing. So let me take over the content of writing for your this thing. At the end of the month, you pay me, right? You guys come into an agreement and you guys can start from $500 per month or from $1,000 per month or from $300 per month. A lot of my students have done this and have gotten their first gig at $400 per month or $500 per month. And it's super easy and simple to do. It even takes you less work for than email copywriting, self, basically. Right? And then we have SEO copywriting here. So what's SEO copywriting? Uh, first, you need to know the meaning of SEO. SEO is simply search engine optimization, right? For example, so you are writing in a way that makes your websites come up on Google when someone search something. So if someone search freelancing in Nigeria, I want my website, the high page freelancer premium, to um, the high page freelancer.com basically to be the first one to come up on Google, right? So if you implement SEO, you do that. But SEO can be the co normal content writing SEO, or it could be the copywriting SEO where you write this content, but in a persuasive way that the person subscribes to your email list, person buys the product you're recommending and the rest of that, okay? So now you know the types of copywriting. You also know the deliverables for copywriting. So which do you think suits you best? Let me know in the comment section down below. But personally, if you want my own opinion as a beginner, 
and you know that you are short on time and you want to get the best results, I would say you learn everything about copywriting at first, the whole basis, because it's all the formulas for writing as a copywriter are almost always the same, right? It's just more shrinked when you're writing emails than when you're writing VSOs and the rest of that are more spaced out, right? So you learn that, and then if you want to focus on a deliverable, where you can create a mock-up portfolio pretty soon and start getting jobs in the fastest time possible. And I would also advise you focus on email copywriting and you also focus on social media copywriting. Sales letters, video sales letter, they're kind of advanced. If you're not that good, you take it quite some time. But if you have time, by all means, they pay super well, insanely well. But email copywriting, social media copywriting, they still pay you well, okay? So with all that said, I hope